You don't want to go deep when you die on the cross. Power go die and power to go. Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loved on the cross. Welcome again to Jesus. This is Ministries broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. And I tell you, I got blessed by that word yesterday. Ooh, glory to God. Let's get back into trading places with him. Um, Jesus became our sin. God made him to be our sin on the cross. Who knew no sin. So you got to realize that what, what God did was laid our sins on a righteous man. Now, Jesus did not lose his righteousness when, when God laid all our sins on him. He didn't lose <clears throat> his righteousness. What he lost was his fellowship. Are you listening? And so we've got to understand <clears throat> that, that when we get truly born again and when we come short, we, we do not lose our righteousness. We, we don't lose who Jesus is and what Jesus did. We, we don't lose we're born of God. We don't lose that we're a new creature and, and you got to become a new creature again. You don't, you don't lose that when you sin in the flesh and in your soul. What you lose is your fellowship. And, and so that's why 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sin, that he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So sin, when God laid all our sins on Jesus, he was still just as right with God as he was before our sins was laid on him. What happened was God had to turn his back on our sin. But then God raised Jesus from the dead and Jesus went in the cross. He went to the cross with a word that no man take up his life. That he had power to lay it down and power to take it again. Hallelujah. And so all of this that Jesus did on the cross was an act of God's love for us. So Jesus didn't lose his righteousness. He went to the cross righteous. He died on the cross righteous. And he rose righteous. But on the cross, he, his fellowship with God was broke. And then as soon as he got down there in the bed of the earth, it was restored back because our sins fell off of him. That his blood had paid the price for him. So God, Jesus had to go to heaven. And he told uh, uh, Mary uh, Magdalene, I believe it was, um, he told her that touch me not, for I have not ascended into heaven. He hadn't presented his blood and his body to God or the sin of Adam and, 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 and all the sins of the world. And so in heaven, you all, no, not here on earth, in heaven we're forgiven. In heaven, we're forgiven of every sin. I don't care if preachers don't like that. don't matter. Well, you know, Pastor, I just believe if you keep on doing something, God won't forgive you. Oh, you got to, then you have to change the Bible. Jesus already done forgave everybody. But the key is do you walk in that? Because it doesn't make it work for you because Jesus did. Jesus died for the whole world. Jesus uh, 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 died and took all the sins of the world away. The scriptures tell us that. Look, look here. And, and let me read it to you in 1 uh, Timothy chapter 4. Uh, and, and the Bible tells us in verse 10. Now for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. Because we trust in the living God. Anytime you really live in Jesus' love, which is godliness. Godliness is the love of Jesus Christ. 
When you live in Jesus' love, you're going to suffer persecution. It's common, and you're going to suffer. And so, uh, he said, who is the Savior of all men, uncatalicized there, especially of those who believe. Amen. And so, so we know that, that, that when you really live in Jesus' love, the world is going to hate you. You're not for their music. You're not for their movie. You're not for the way they want to do things. Well, I just believe everybody needs to just do whatever you want and whatever you feel like. Just be free. Now, see, God, Christians ain't like that. We don't get to do what we want. We're led by the Holy Spirit. We're led, we're led and guided into the truth of Jesus Christ. We're under total submission and in chains and bond. I am in bonds and chains. Y'all can't even see. You don't even see the shackles around me and all on my leg. And, and I'm shackled as a prisoner of the Lord. I don't do what I want. I do what the master tells me. I live what he says. And if I come short, I, 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 I repent. Amen. But Jesus has been teaching me how to not come short. And, and, and so I just live every day, just live in him. And I don't never look, you know, I, I, I got a, uh, you know, I was a basketball player. And, um, and so I was, I shot, uh, uh, you know, close to 90% from the free throw line. It's probably high eight. And, and, and so I never looked forward to when I went to shoot a free throw, I, I really believe it was a free throw. I remember my son played over at Lighthouse, and and and, and uh, if he missed a free throw, I, I said, son, that was free. So you don't want to miss something free. And, and so when I went up to shoot, I just knew I was going to make them. I never went intending to miss one. See, we should never live intending to sin. We should always be trusting in Christ that he is leading and guiding us in all truth. And he is showing us the ways of God when we walk in his victory. We should never look forward to messing up. You should never be a, a, a proper sign. Everybody going to sin. Everybody going to mess up. We should be proper sign <clears throat> that that we follow in Christ and we won't walk in darkness because Jesus teaches how not to. John 8, 20. He said, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And so Jesus, Jesus, uh, God made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we would be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, go back to 1 John 3, 5. And we're going to read down through verse 7. Uh, and we know that he was manifest. Who? The Lord Jesus. To take away our sins. I'm just sad. And so many believers don't know this. That Jesus came to take away our sins. See, the key, uh, you can accept Jesus, believe died on the cross, forgave you, rose from the dead. But but to live holy and godly, sanctified, set apart. The only way you can live in holiness, I taught y'all yesterday, follow peace and holiness. What you follow, and when you follow peace, Jesus is always giving you something in, in your test and trial. He's giving you his way of doing things. When, when you live holy, you are sanctified. Jesus is setting you apart, telling you how to live every day, what not to do and what to do. Now you will see God now. You will see God now. And when, when you don't live it, you don't usually see God now. But without which no man shall see the Lord. Really in the Greek, you, you won't see God now. People wonder why. Ain't nothing changing. Because Jesus is not giving you nothing. And he's not telling you what to do. Amen. That's, that's good preaching. And so, so we know that Jesus was manifest to take away our sins. Now, now, now the key to that 
is in him is no sin. So, so if we say, if we say that we have fellowship with him and, and we walk in darkness, see fellowship with him, we're not talking about being born again. But if we say we, we have fellowship with him in our spirits and we walk in the flesh, walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Because if, if you're going to fellowship with Jesus, you're going to have to do what he tells you. And you're going to let have to let him give to you. You're going to have to let, let, let Jesus speak to you. Amen. So in him is no sin. It is so vital for all of you listening and watching the broadcast to know that Jesus has no sin, that we have somebody who we can trust, who knows how to not fail, who knows how to be tempted, yet without sin. I was listening to a preacher, and I mean preaching a good word about Jesus fulfilled the law. He, We, we live in his obedience. He, he makes us righteous. By the life he lived, he he gives us the blessing of God from the obedience he lived. And under law, it, it didn't happen. You had to obey, but you didn't get nothing but some curses. And I mean, he brought that thing. He broke it down. He shared about uh, you know Jesus and and what Jesus did. And it's by his obedience. Uh, that we live and move and have our being, it's, it's, it's by him. And then he get to the end of that, got to the end of it, and said <laughs> that the way you make this work is you have to touch the hem of his garment. And I said, the hem of his garment? I said, no, that was a woman with the issue of blood that touched the hem of his garment. I ain't got no garment. I have to believe in him. And he, he taught all them people that. And I guess they're going to go try to find a garment somewhere and try to touch it. But that's not what the scriptures teach us. In 1 John 3, we in 3, and you go on down in chapter 3 here, 1 John, it says, and this is his commandment in verse 23, that we believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, the character and the authority. The word name in the Greek means his character and authority. And then love one another as he gave us command. That's how we make it work. We believe in him. We trust and rely on who he is and what he did. That's how you make it work. And so, um, so you go to verse 6. And verse 6, you all, just absolutely exposes people's darkness. And that's what John was doing so that people couldn't come in and think like they're serving the Lord. They would be exposed. And, and, and here's, what, here's what John said. That in um, 1 John 3, 6, Whoever abides in him sinneth not. Now, let, let me tell you what this means because you could go around condemning people, beating people up, uh, making people... Uh, you know, you know, you shouldn't wear pants and you ain't holy. And, and, and you know, listen, I, I don't believe in a woman wearing a man's pants. But when they make pants for women that are not like men's, they're not men pants. They're women pants. And and so, you know, they, they say if that's gonna make you holy, then that's you know, then they're not in the fruits of the spirit. And I believe that women should dress modest. I believe they shouldn't be dressing that draws attention to them. You know you wear stuff so tight that you know you have to get a drill to get, get them on and a drill to get them off. And you got to do all kind of breathing exercises to button them up. Come on now. Come on now, you, you need to you need to get you some bigger clothes. And and all they do is, is just just promotes the world and draws attention from men to look at you and um and it's not God. But to tell somebody they don't wear no long dress, 
that they're not godly. That's wrong. And so whoever abides in Jesus, listen to sin if not. Now, what, what they're not going to see in Pascal? Well, you're not going to live in anything that Jesus tell you not to do. So whoever abides in Jesus will not live in doing something that you know Jesus don't want you to do. But whoever sinner and is, is living in something that you know the Lord don't want you to do, have not seen him, neither known him. Now John goes into verse 7 and says, Look, children, let no man deceive you. Now, Pascal, what do you mean deceive you? When people tell you it's all right. You know, I, I've had people come and, 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 and to the church and I started counseling them and teaching them the truth. And they said, well, you know, my, where we used to go to church, our pastor taught us not to put up with that stuff. I said, but Jesus said, when you stand praying, forgive in Mark 11, 25. He's not telling you what Jesus said. He's telling you to keep a grudge towards somebody. So let no man deceive you. It, 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 listen, listen, Captain, this. He that doeth righteousness. Who's righteous? Jesus. He makes us righteous. And, and so we're righteous in our spirit when we got born again. He created righteousness and true holiness in that new nature in us, in our spirits. But here he says, he that doeth righteous is righteous, even as Jesus is righteous. So if you're not going to do what Jesus says, he tells you, do not let people deceive you. That they're saying that I belong to the Lord, but I'm not going to do what he said. He said, don't let people deceive you. And don't let ministers teach that to you. That that you can you can cigarettes. And you're righteous. You, you, you might be righteous in your spirit, but you are not living righteousness out. And they need to, I need to tell you the truth. You cannot smoke cigarettes and walk in fellowship with God. Oh, I just don't believe that. I didn't. See, you, you're making up your own doctrine that's from the devil. And, and what, what people do in these last days, the Bible tell them, what they'll do when they don't want to receive the truth from, from a true man of God, of somebody God's anointed and called, what they'll do is they'll go around and, and, and look for somebody to bring them teaching that make them feel good. For the time will come, this is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. When, when they will not endure sound doctrine, just sound telling you this is what Jesus said. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away from the truth, their ears from the truth. See, <laughs> when you turn your ears from the truth, you're turning away from the reality pertaining to the appearance that was in Jesus. He had no sin. And shall be turned unto fables. But thou, but watch thou in all things and endure afflictions. And so let, let, let's go, let's go to 2 Corinthians 14. I'm talking chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. It says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? See, what, what fellowship had Jesus with sin? What communion have the light of Christ with darkness? What concord has Christ with Belial or the devil? <clears throat> what part of he that believeth with an infidel? Now, this don't mean that you couldn't have friends. This means that they can't have no influence on your life. And I'm going to tell you something that, that has influenced the body of Christ. They, they, they are brain people. I heard this musician, he, he was saying in, back in the 60s and 70s and still is. 
And this is what he said on, on Christian television. He said, now listen, y'all don't have to quit listening to, to the secular music just because you get saved. You, you can still listen at the secular music. Now he's deceiving them. Because what the devil does, saints, is when, when, when you believe those lies, you never live in righteousness or the righteousness that Jesus is. Because Jesus ain't telling you what to do. That, that man is telling you what to do and he's wrong. And what, what he's teaching you is, is you can fellowship with this and you can fellowship with the cup of the Lord. You can fellowship with the blood of Jesus that took all your sins away. And you can fellowship with continuing to sin that grace may abound. God absolutely forbids that we walk in something that we know Jesus uh, uh, don't want us to do. And, and what this does, it channels devils. Listen to the word of music. And, and what it does, it channels spirits to make you get seduced to 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 bring doctrine of devils that make you argue and fight to stand up. I just, you know, like people be listening to me. Well, I just don't believe all that Pascal said. See, that's a spirit telling you that. Well, I just think he's wrong. You, I don't see why you you. I go to church every Sunday. And, 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 and I, I give I give to the church and, and I do it. It ain't nothing wrong with me listening to a little word of music. See, see, that's a spirit talking to you. Well, you know, I go to church, but I, I got to, you know, I just drink once every week on, on Fridays. I, I, I get a little, little drunk, but but I don't do it no other day. Well, Pascal, you know, I used to smoke three packs a day, but I'm down to a half a pack now. See, see, Jesus was the one with no sin. You're not letting him trade places with you. And you lay your cigarettes, you're drinking, you're, whatever you do on Jesus and then partake of the holiness and the obedience of Jesus Christ. So, so how could you bring the devil with Jesus? Then if you can't bring the devil with Jesus, how you going to bring the devil with you? And you're going to serve Jesus. So what concord is Christ with Baal? What part of he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? What? See, you, you, the world should not be influencing us. The world should not be telling us what to believe. They, they shouldn't tell us about race, because you know we we're in. There's only two families on earth: God's family and the devil's family. Ain't nobody else. And they should. They really shouldn't be telling you you white and black. Now they can do the world like that, but they shouldn't be telling the church that. And and I believe in Black History Month for for sinners, but I don't believe in that for Christians. Because God makes us who we are in Christ. And we don't need nobody, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I just, I just, you know, despise it to be honest with you, but I don't despise it for other people. But don't, don't give me the smallest month out of the year. And if I want black history, I can do it every month of the year. I, I don't need you to, to do me like that. See, Christ don't do me like that. He makes me who he is by his obedience. And so I'm not trying to... To, to feel good about myself because Christ done already made me who I am. So, so the Christians should not be embracing what the world is doing. We should be embracing Christ, trading places with him. Amen. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. God hath said, I will dwell in him and walk in him. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, here it is. Verse 17, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. Be ye separate. Let Jesus tell you what to do. See, when you come out, you're making Jesus your Lord. When you're being separate, you, you're letting Jesus separate you from how, 
and what you used to be and what you used to think. And then touch not the unclean thing. Don't be putting your hands to stuff that you know the Lord. Don't, don't be turning on pornography. Don't be putting your hands to touch things and movies and things that are unclean. And I will receive you. See, I'll fellowship with you. And, and will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. Amen. And so, you know, <laughs> when you teach people the truth, it's, it's not what they think. I can't tell you what how you feel and what you think and make you right. I have to make Jesus right. And people don't even realize they have devils. And these devils will tell you, that ain't right. But the word said it. I want to make available to you this six CD series, Trading Places with Him, Part 3. On the screen is our address. Amen. You can uh, uh, go to our webpage, robertscalesministry.org, and you can uh, order them there with credit cards, or you can call our church, 615-6237-9802. That's 615-237-9802. And um, or you can write us to Jesus is Answer Ministries. And these are $30, but you can get all three of them for $75. And I'll throw in the book free. God's Grace Explained, and uh, or you can just order the book by itself for ten dollars, and we'll get these right out to you. They, they're changing people's lives, they're transforming their thinking. Everybody that comes to the church says, "I learned more here in three or three weeks than I have my whole life." It's amazing, and so come um, and and order these. We'll get them right out to you. I'll pay the shipping and handling, and I know that these will be a blessing to you. And uh, you can write us to Jesus as the Ministries, Post Office Box, your check or money order. Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. Hallelujah. I know you'll be blessed. I want to invite y'all to Jesus as a church. Saints, I'm telling you, uh, if God is speaking to you, if you really want to go and mature and grow spiritually, don't want to tell God what to do, come to Jesus as a church. Because he will tell you what to do. Amen. And I want to thank my partners and friends. Thank you so much for your financial support. Thank you for helping me to get the gospel out. Saints, what I'm teaching is so vital in these last days. We're going to need this message in the last days. And thank you. You can go to our webpage, robertscaleministry.org, and you can donate on there from PayPal or, or use your credit card to donate to help us. Thank you for praying and obeying what the Lord tell you. Well, my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus and some ministries, I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember, saints, that how Christ loved you on the cross. Believe in that love and go live it toward one another. Have a blessed day in Jesus. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.